I'm starting the stream. Okay. Yeah, we just we just uh, started. We just started like heavy going on lockdown because we have two or three confirmed cases, probably more, but I think three that they've like released in uh, the city that I'm in. So it's like, you know, it's way more serious when there's actually confirmed cases in your city, especially because you know that it's, uh, you know, people they have it, but it's not show they're not showing signs of it yet. Yeah, that's that's the part that like, I mean. I don't know. There's there's a lot of really there's a lot of people that are just super uninformed. They're like, it's not a big deal because I'm not gonna get that sick because I'm young. Like, not that many people are actually dying, but it's like you just become a transmitter of the disease, regardless exactly. regardless of whether you're showing symptoms or not to people that could be at risk. That's the big deal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, uh, I mean, you, you know, let's say you're even uh you know 100 selfish let's say we live in a world where it's just totally uh morally okay to just you know i don't give a fuck if if people die i don't care if i die whatever right um it still is gonna be extremely economically damaging to the world if we if we lose tons of you know boomers basically <laughs> because of because of the disease like it's gonna fuck everybody over to to lose to lose people obviously i mean it's such an obvious thing but to some people, they don't realize that. Yeah, is, it, is that like the economy is going to crash and it's not going to come back because we're not going to have the man hours, you know. And so honestly, less people. More, more important than that, it's the fact that, um, if the hospitals get completely swamped with coronavirus patients, then they can't oh, treat yeah. other people who are right potentially right. more important, which is what's happening in Italy. That like. If you want to know what's, hap what's going to happen in your country, wherever you live, look at Italy. Because Italy was one of those countries where people didn't take it very seriously initially, and now they actually have zero hospital beds for the entire country. And like people are just dying because they can't go to the hospital because there's no room. So, <laughs> Dude, Ellie was like begging me not to eat moldy bread yesterday. I was like, I, I made burgers, but I didn't check if we had burger buns. So I like, you know, I checked the fridge and we had burger buns. I looked at the day; it's like two weeks old. But you know, it's been in the fridge, so it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. A little bit of mold on it. I figured it's not that big of a deal. Just cut the mold off. You know, you're good. You can just go. Ahead. You know, I'm, not gonna, I'm, I'm not one to wait. I don't waste food. I, you know, I, I drink a lot of Diet Pepsi and probably make a lot of stupid financial decisions. But I try not to waste food. And she was like, "Andrew, don't. You're gonna go to. The, you're gonna have to go to the hospital. The doctors are gonna think you're such an idiot." <laughs> getting food poisoning during the coronavirus like how fucking dumb do you have to be yeah honestly that's, i that, ate them and i i, I was fine so yeah. that, that is one story. one thing it's like you just want you just don't want to go to the hospital at this point like for anything because it's messed up so yeah, yeah wash your hands right. quarantine yourself take care of yourself take care of people around you yeah yeah i'm worried about uh i'm, I'm definitely worried about the the like older people, older yeah. family members is, is like a big concern of mine, especially because I live in a, a, a city that has a, like three ho major hospitals. Yeah. You know, they, they, they fly people here to do like intensive surgeries. Right. That's like how big these hospitals are. So if there's, if there's any city that's going to like explode in infection, it's and my mom works in the hospital. So. Yeah. We, uh, we canceled our wedding because we don't want people to travel. We don't want our family members to be, Oh, you straight canceled it, eh? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, we're still going to get married, but we're not going to have a celebration. No, I know, but yeah. you were pretty – I remember like a week ago, you were pretty sure that you were like, ah, it doesn't seem that bad. We're probably still going to have it. But then like a week passes and yeah. shit just kind of blows up, and you're like, okay. Yeah, that was well. the thing is we were like, you know, it, it'll be okay. And then like all of a sudden it's like, all right, travel ban. Everything's canceled. And we're like, okay, we shouldn't do this. <laughs> it's yeah, pretty pretty exactly. irresponsible for us to do this. So. exactly and once again it's not even a you thing it's like forcing family to come and stuff you know it's yeah it's the same thing as like yeah you know i don't care if i get sick uh i'm a degenerate i'm just gonna you know deal with whatever keep playing dota but it's like the other people you know my mom comes to visit here every other night so if i get her sick it's it's gg right <laughs> that's a, it's such a weird thing like uh for us gamers <laughs> especially if you're like already working from home the, the whole quarantine thing you're just like well this is my normal life <laughs> yeah that is a weird part of it that is weird i went to get fish and chips with my dad 
yesterday and uh just like i had an hour between coaching i've been taking a lot of coaching sessions because with the economy crashing <laughs> i'm trying to i'm trying to pay rent but uh yeah so i i, I just went got fish and chips with him because with the whole quarantine you know i haven't seen him in a long time and uh every uh table that was at the fish and chips place number one there's fuck all there nobody was there and then uh she said there's one person working usually this place is packed it's like famous in the city to for, for being like the best fish and chips like all the old people go there you know you go there for they just do fish and chips that's how good they are that's mm -hmm. all they do period so empty and they had reserved signs on every other table and they were like you have you can't sit on any of the reserve tables and it was yeah. just one person one person working like the absolute bare minimum ellie got a job across the street at the mall we live across the street from the mall it's like literally right out the window yeah, can the she right work or is she... she can't well she went for the uh introduction mm -hmm. uh where they basically you know taught her how to do the work or whatever and uh, they said like sorry we don't have shifts for you nobody's shopping so we we're not we're not putting stuff out on the shelves so right. we'll we'll give you shifts afterwards and it's like you know i i understand it's, it, it's it's like uh you know there's no fucking zombie apocalypse out there but it's all just to make sure this shit doesn't spread and like Italy doesn't happen in, in all of our countries. Yeah. Uh, sorry if you're, sorry for, if you're from Italy, it's real, real fucked up. What's what's going on there. Yeah. It's about to happen in the U S for sure. Like there's actually no stopping it at this point. The U S is about to go into some real serious situations. Like let's see. coronavirus, USA. Like, SOS alert. Like, uh, Pretty much all experts project that the U.S. will be where Italy is in about two weeks. So, death toll reaches a hundred. We just had the first person die in in Ontario, which is like the biggest biggest uh, province in Canada. Mm -hmm. Two thirds, two thirds of people. So basically, Canada. We, we just had our first death. So people are like, people are freaking the fuck out now because you know when it when it hasn't killed anybody, people don't take it as seriously. But when it kills somebody, it's like, oh shit, that could be me. Right. Well. <laughs> on that yes on that yep. note we should probably get into the dota stuff because i'm sure this is basically all everybody's been hearing about for the last two weeks so but that's true it's our job to ignore it yeah so apologies let's, guys let's, let's uh let's get into our actual show uh welcome to alchemy answers episode 71 thank you all for tuning in not that you have anything better to do right now but um we appreciate your viewership nonetheless and of course we always appreciate the great questions that we get every single week from our Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter um, and help your boys continue to pay their rent, well, there is no <laughs> other way for us to do so. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash Dota Alchemy and uh, become a patron where you can ask us questions every week, get replays reviewed, and also um, we have a new benefit. You want to tell them about the new benefit, Jenkins? What's upcoming in about a week, probably? Yeah, we're going to stream uh, probably some duo queue, and patrons get to select our heroes, unfortunately. Although, I got to say, I have faith in our patrons. I have faith in them because there's some, they're pretty tryhard, usually. Yeah. So I feel like they wouldn't meme it up. There's a few memers. I think Bradley Dragon's going to be giving us some, giving us some shit for sure. Let's be real. Brad, I'm looking at you. But the other guys, uh, pretty, pretty tryhard. Be like, oh, try long druid off lane and it's like okay all right okay we'll nature's profit off lane with like a uh, rubik support yeah but sure why not sure. <laughs> go, go for it. yeah hell yeah yeah before we get into the questions i just wanted to say that bradley dragon about six months ago was preaching the benefits of playing sand king support uh sand king mid that's like all he was doing is sand king mid sand king mid. this is what you do you just sit on the creep wave and sandstorm and you just push the creep wave out i saw miracle playing sand king mid today it was not it was not Sandstorming the wave and AFKing in the lane, but he was definitely playing Sand King mid, and hmm. uh, I believe he lost the game. So, <laughs> oh, okay, well that makes sense. So basically, you're saying Miracle was griefing a game today, and he just could have been any hero, Techies, Pudge, whatever. Probably. Hey, Techies got 75 movement speed on their minds. That's pretty real. 75 movement speed on their minds. Yeah, the minds got buffed. They they move uh... a lot faster at. Level at 20. 25 yeah oh okay 25 jesus christ <laughs> as if techies players didn't have enough reason to like play for the late game god damn why 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 do they why do they get that and you know pudge's win rate went down with the with the uh 
the changes. Yeah, because it was a bad change, wasn't it? Yes, it was a nerf. It was 100% <laughs> a nerf. That's what I thought. I was like, hey, now even his potential to be a tank in the early game is gone. So he actually doesn't do anything <laughs> for like 35 minutes. Yeah, he's he's just the most garbage hero in Dota. He just might he legitimately is is worse than Luna. Luckily, he's probably just going to be banned every single game because of the new banning mechanics. Banning mechanics? What do they change about banning? So, how it works is every single hero that's nominated by all 10 players has a 50% chance of being banned. Oh, individually. Yep, individually and if oh nobody selects a, uh, a hero, then it just picks the most banned hero in that MMR bracket and bans that hero and goes down a list like that. Damn. So, man, Huskar, Meepo. Yeah, so there's 10 bans every single game. And, yeah, the, the people who, like, spam heroes are going to only be able to play those heroes 50% of the time. I mean, that's good because now I was, you know, you know Broodmother's win rate went up by, like, a big amount? And I think it's just because you can last pick Brood. I last picked a Night Stalker mid, which in retrospect was really stupid. But I, I played a game today, and I last picked Night Stalker mid. And the guy that was mid against me last picked Razor. And he didn't see what I picked first. Right. He just randomly picked Razor. And I got totally cucked in the lane, of course. Because <laughs> I'm a melee hero versus Razor. He just sucked me off. And I'm just, I'm just sitting here thinking, like, what if I picked Brood and this guy's just Razor? He's, he's just done. Like, the game is just over. And you can do that every game now, so I'm glad the I'm glad the bans are, are like how you just described because otherwise, good lord, yeah, like Brood, Hossigar, Meepo. yeah, the whole counterpicking thing is like very weird now. It's weird. It's really weird. I've been having weird ass games, man. Me too. <laughs> Me too. I don't know what's going on in these games. I had a Beastmaster support. I was playing against a Legion commander support. Yeah, and kill aggro trial or aggro dual lane with lion, and I was fucking monkey king off lane, safe lane. It was weird. Yeah, I played two Nobody games since the patch. Two games since the patch. One had a gyro five who leached four levels for me, and then abandoned me in lane. And I fed, and then <laughs> <laughs> in my second game, I had a morphling who started out the the picking phase being like, "Wow, they nerfed E Blade. It's terrible on morphling now." And then he picked morphling, and then just had no farm at like 30 minutes into the game. Hmm. Sounds sounds about right for Divine <laughs> Okay, with that being said, let's get on in to the questions. We got quite a few of them. No surprise, everybody's in quarantine. Uh so we have Zebus first and he said, "What do you feel about Lashrak in the offlane?" I recently watched Kezu's Lashrak guide. What does he have a Lashrak guide? Is that on Game Leap or does he have No, a... it's on YouTube. Oh, cool. Cool. It's uh it's nice to see good players making guides and videos. Like Owie's video is just super, super value. I mean, no offense to Owie, but he's complete dog shit at making like Content. he didn't script <laughs> he didn't script it or anything like yeah. that. But he's just so good at the game that most of the stuff that comes out of his, of his mouth is just gold. So right. I, Presentation, I, I love to see that. two out of 10. Information, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> TI winner, right? So, yeah. Uh, so, okay. Zeba says one of the good things about him is that he's playable in multiple positions. As an offlaner, I've been building pipe, mech, and other fighting items, which makes me hard to kill for the opponents. At the same time, I'm possible to ignore due to his high damage output. I, I think it I think it's pretty good. I think it's not like an every game sort of thing. In, in my experience, you really need to have some sort of uh, just generally in Dota, you want to have some sort of hero that's like running in and and tanky and uh, starting fights. Lashrak doesn't really do that, and a lot of the time it falls on the off laner to play that sort of role. So if you have like an Earth Spirit, for example, as a position four, that hero essentially functions as an off laner. He roams and then he's an off laner in the game. In fact, I've even seen people play him as an offlane. So that's when Lashrak is totally viable because you have not only does it set up for your stun and provide you some meaty uh, frontliner for the lane and some kill potential, but it also gives you a hero to kind of function uh, for what you're lacking in terms of having a regular offlaner. But it's definitely not an every game thing. I would say Lashrak is not like broken, unless you're really good at it. If you're really good at any hero, uh, spamming it is honestly fine. 
unless it's complete dog shit like Pudge, then you don't do it. But if it's Lashrak, you're fine. Yeah, I think that one one kind of bad thing about Lashrak now is the change to Boots of Travel. Because he used to get that item on the hero almost every single time because like, he yeah. needed the mana pool refill in the fountain. Yep, um, definitely. So I will be interested to see how that affects his win rate and, and the build going forward. Good point. Yeah, that was a that's a big thing for like a lot of these int cores. These yeah. like Pugnas and Lashrax and Death Prophet. So okay. So it reduces a cooldown. It does not consume a charge. So it is still you know, Boots of Travel is <clears> still <throat> pretty decent. Yeah, it's still really good, but it's just not you're not allowed to TP home and then TP back out to lane instantly anymore. Yeah, but but with that being said, the move speed was buffed too from thirty eight yeah. and to forty four percent. Uh, I guess the forty four percent on on bots too. Yeah. So that is that is pretty high, and yeah. So so now you can you can take dips in the fountain, but you're basically back to the fountain and then walking to a lane. Yeah. Instead of TPing to a fight, or you walk to a lane, you walk back to fountain, then TP out, walk back to fountain, TP out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm interested in seeing that too. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure um, how that's going because TP scroll does cost more money now. So TPs just generally are. Or way. I mean, the, the funny thing is, like, they can make TPs cost like quite a lot of gold, and it would still be really bad to waste them. You know, I just realized, did they nerf shovel at all? You're digging up nope 180 gold of yeah. two TPs. Yeah. What shovels mega buffed because of that? Excuse me. Really, really good item now. That's wild, dude. Orba Venom slows by a lot now. Have you tried the new Oove? Uh, I haven't tried it in a game, but I figured that it would probably be better overall because you didn't really care about the damage before. Dude, campsite, campsite was right. I hate to say it, <laughs> but they they actually nerfed the damage on Oove because it was too much. By the way, guys, did you know Oove has the same damage as a Wraith Band? <laughs> I, I didn't know that until Campsite told me about fifty times. So yeah, that's that's uh, it's it's an interesting item. I'm not I'm not I'm not sure how I feel about anything. The patch is just so fresh, man. Yeah. Okay, uh, Dan one says, or Danny says, how do I know if I am bad at a role? More like, how can you identify if a person is not good at a specific role based on what they do or don't do during the gameplay? I can tell you for some roles, uh, what things, details should you be looking for for each specific role? I've been playing with friends on a 2K stack, and we've been having issues with who plays what role. I feel like part of it comes down to how well uh, does one person do in lane? But the hardest part for me is to read. Uh, to read is the mid and late game. So, geez, I mean, it would depend on the bracket. At two K, like, realistically, everybody sucks at their roles. That's just that's just the definition of not being like. At, yeah. what, at what at what MMR would you say people are actually like defined as as just objectively good, like above oh, average? Oh man, at, in the ninetieth percentile, like. Yeah, probably. I don't think that people actually play their roles legitimately well. Well. I would say that you start to see like reasonably good mid and carry players at like 3.5 to 4k. You don't see good off laners until like high 5k and you don't see good supports until like high 5k plus. It's weird how that works. I would say if it's, I'm just going to give you like, I guess, I guess like if, if I'm, if I'm in a game with somebody and I, and, and I can, this is how I tell if somebody doesn't play the role. If I have a four position that doesn't recognize that the five is about to go pull, or if I have a four position that soaks XP from me while the creeps are under tower, I know they don't play four. Right. Or they think they play four and they're bad at it because that's the foundation. That's the baseline. For a carry, I would probably say... Showing up if to too carry, many fights. If a carry is showing up to too many fights, exactly. If a yeah. carry is showing up to too many fights, they're not a carry player. Or they're, they think they're a carry player and they're bad at carry. For mid, it's so like individual. It's like such a skill based, yeah, one v one sort of. I would say mid. If if you don't like the pressure of a one on one matchup, and if you don't like the pressure of like trying to like pit your will against somebody else and just own them straight up, then you probably shouldn't play mid. Like if you get nervous in one on ones, you probably shouldn't play mid. Um, if you're nervous about kind of being under a microscope or something like that. Um, so that that's play. that's honestly kind of how I feel. I don't like the I I don't like the feeling of getting owned. And if you're a mid player, you're gonna get owned sometimes, and you have to like kind of take it in stride and and then like re own the other person. 
but um i think it's i think it's pretty easy to know if you're not meant for the role that you play like watch some people play <laughs> that are really good at that role and if you like that style then you're probably good um but if you you know if you watch Arteezy play if you watch hector play if you watch one of these like carry players who really plays the hard carry they don't show up for fights unless they like absolutely have determined it's perfect and if if you're wandering around the map trying to like kill the other team you are not playing carry correctly that's that's straight up so what are the ones we didn't mention so far five and offlane for offlane Maybe it's it's like I, I think I think a lot of people who think that they're off lane but aren't actually an off laner are people who it's usually the opposite problem of a carry. It's people who are playing too greedy. They're not playing sacrificial enough. They're not yeah. like cutting waves. They're not doing annoying shit. They're they're essentially being how do I say this? Not be offensive. Giant pussies. <laughs> you can't be a giant pussy when you're an off laner. Yeah. Um, but people are, and then they're like, why is my team not carrying me? Look at my look how many kills I have and how little deaths I have. It's like, well... That's not your job. You know, Ice, I, Ice, Ice, Ice would have 14 deaths in this game, but he would have way more hero damage, right. more towers taken. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's kind of kind of similar for fives. Although fives and pubs is... It's I would really... say fives like, is warding. Like, if you if you don't like warding... And, like, if you're a five and you haven't bought, like, 10 centuries... And the centuries aren't, like, bought out, yeah. you're not a good five. Yeah, I agree. Um. Yeah, if you're if you're not willing to give away all of your regen in the laning stage, if you're if you're not willing to like tank smoke ganks for your team, if you're not willing to like you said just spend like countless amounts of gold on sentries to make sure that the other team doesn't have vision of the areas that you're playing in, then you probably shouldn't play five. Not that's the biggest thing that I notice is like I mean, I'm I don't want to toot my own horn, but I'm a pretty good five player as far as like the range of skill of the people that I play with in my bracket. Two, two. That's what I'm here. I would say that I'm definitely one of the better five players in my bracket. And when I don't play five, the amount of centuries that are bought by other fives is just like maybe three or four per game. Like when they absolutely know there's a sentry there or when they absolutely know that there's an observer ward there. But if you're, if you're a five, you need to be looking for wards. You need to like, always have sentries and like secure areas that you want to play in and uh most people just don't do that they do not not even not even in high rated bracket sprg thomas slav good lord uh (laughs) what do you guys do to keep your eyes and brains healthy while playing a lot hey jokes on you my brain is very unhealthy (laughs) oftentimes i play for long hours because i'm on a winning winning streak uh but my eyes are pretty sensitive any insight all I can say is take breaks. It's so it's so basic. I mean, I don't have any I don't have any crazy uh, strat for you, other than like it depends. I mean, I can tell you what I do. For me, you know, I I walk. I make sure to get up and walk. And it, it's not like I get up and walk so because it's like part of my ideal structure or something like or or I I have any good reason for it other than just my ass is hurting from sitting so long. And my, I have a headache from looking at the computer for so long, and I kind of just want something to break up the day. I want to go outside, smell the fresh coronavirus infected air, and I go for a walk, and that's that's pretty good. If I can't if I can't go outside because it's too cold or something, because I'm Canadian, then I'll take a bath, turn the lights off, slam the old lights off, and just kind of reset. Uh, just something to, I, I think like changing your body's position is is a lot of the time very beneficial for for whatever reason i mean i'm not i'm not a doctor but you know it's like you you do stretches right and that actually prevents you from getting stiff which kind of is the opposite of what you would what you would expect for a lot of things and i think it's the same with like if you're sitting in one position you're just gonna get you're just gonna get really stiff you know if you don't use it you lose it they say so get up watch tv take a bath take a shower lay down on the bed play some minecraft do whatever something something different (laughs) break it up regarding eyesight in particular i noticed that um if i'm sitting in front of my computer for like a long period of time and then i take my glasses off for example i'm like way more blind than i am normally and um one of the best things that kind of resets that is going outside and just like looking at stuff in the distance just like you know 
letting keep it on children at the old park donnie uh, doing that again? i mean just like being outside and looking at stuff that's not three feet away from me at all times um because well, yeah because that's the restraining order right your your eyes have muscles in them and so if you just stare at one thing forever like you're basically just like clenching your bicep except it's in your eye and if you just clenched your bicep for like six straight hours you'd get a really bad cramp and it would probably feel like shit for the rest of the day i could fuck it dude. no problem dude. do it hold it for the rest of the stream just like that <laughs> I'm not gonna do that, pussy. I'm gonna... Hey, you! <laughs> you don't call me that. You are one. Okay, let's move on. Good question. Interesting question. Very, very, uh, not super Dota. Very like scientific. You know, weird. Uh, anyway, Kremlin says, "Thanks for answering my questions about Marana and how to counter sniper. It's super appreciated. No problem." Uh, okay, this is. This isn't a question, so skip through reading this while on a podcast. Whoops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kremlin's just thanking us for answering his question and putting a little more information in there. Well, I'm going to read it now. Fuck it. Uh, it. Something I had been subconsciously doing and probably why I've been having more success with Marana is uh, find Sniper, arrow him in the face, and take him out before a full team fight takes place. Yeah, sounds about right. I got flame for my carry for getting the range creep after learning Sacred Arrow first. But I decided that higher ranked players would have understood and not down uh, play down to my bracket. I'll stick with your advice and learn W first. Good shit. Absolutely stick with it. People in that bracket are in that bracket for a reason. And if you follow their advice, you are going to be following the advice of people that are in your bracket. And, and you're going to remain in that bracket as well. Because otherwise, yep. why the fuck would they be there if, if their advice was, was better advice than that bracket? So, right. yeah, that's good stuff. Good to hear. Pogasus. What are some general strategies for shutting down Lone Druid? Okay. Uh, hit the bear as much as you can in the laning yeah. stage. Yeah. Um, buy Halberd. Uh, AoE stuns are generally pretty good. BKB, quite good against the hero. I think a lot of people don't realize how weak the bear actually is. Yeah. Like, if you just get heroes that can like stun it and kite it, or like a Slardar that just amplifies it, and you just go, you just go on the bear... It's it's actually really hard for a lone druid to play. Like that hero plays with a lead. That hero plays with like an item advantage, mm -hmm. uh, which of course he can get from towers. And uh, also, I would say that killing lone druid, having some hero to jump him and disable him, it's it's all like a sniper. Jump him and disable him before he gets the ult off. It's like a good sniper. Yeah, it's like if you can kill him before he gets the ult off, do that. If you can't, if you if he gets the transformation off, just kill the bear because then he's just like this fat hero that does nothing. Yeah, the bear will kill you if you don't kill it. So yeah. it's it's actually quite squishy. Like it's, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't gain any extra armor as he levels up or anything, uh, right? Anything like that. So I mean, when you get the talent, of course, but then you have to skip the the other one, which is really good. But you get what I'm saying. Like it's it, the bear does not scale very well. It scales with items, and he doesn't get armor items on the bear until very late game. So yep, you just kill it. Uh, okay, so Uga Chaka says, how do you approach fighting versus pushing as clockwork? Should I make plays with hook off cooldown? I think so. I think yeah. if you have hook, you go smoke. Always, always. Or should I wait until an objective can be taken and then use the hook uh, while I farm in between? You definitely just don't farm on that hero. Like, it, yeah. You you get I, level six and then you just play with your team for the rest of the game and rocket creep waves on the other side of the map. I would I would honestly yeah I would I would say that like if you if you are hitting creeps on clockwork outside of the first like six minutes of the game you're doing it wrong yeah i don't think that hero should ever even battery assault an ability that does an insane amount of damage takes forever to kill waves yep because it's not aoe so he's just awful at killing waves it's he's not it's it's like taking a slardar and killing waves with a slardar even slardar is faster than a clockwork yeah. And these heroes want to not be showing because they're just such good fighters. Like, if they're not showing, the enemy team has to be so scared. Okay, where's Clockwork at? Where's Slardar at? So I think you almost never, almost never hit creep waves on Clockwork. Clockwork's game plan is basically get level 6 and then just balls to the wall fight as much as possible. Every single hook cooldown, yep. you you kill somebody. Uh, or you play near a hero. Like, you just look for pickoffs. You're just looking for something with the hook. And if the enemy team doesn't ever present you a good hook, well, then that means they're not farming. And that's your job to make sure that they're not farming. Yep, I agree. Snowy says, I have an MMR slash metal question. Do you think the value of metals across different regions are equivalent? I'm thinking that different regions would have a different distribution of skill across their players. China, for instance, might have a player base that have a very sound understanding of the game, 
even at the lower skill end. Australia may have a more YOLO, what is this game type players. Uh, therefore, could it be possible to create a five player in Australia? If I went to China, I'm actually Harold one there. Uh... Uh, I feel like no. I can tell you, I've queued on, I've queued on Europe in my exact MMR bracket, and I've queued on SEA. I've queued in China too, and everybody's just this dog shit, and it's just for different reasons. Yeah, I like, think I think it only would really, you'd only really be able to see the difference if you were looking at like super small population servers, like if you played on like the the japan server or something or like south african server maybe you know these places that only have like a few thousand players on it yeah yeah maybe i mean yeah i I think so i think it's just like a a number of players issue um but with you know with europe and china and america and, and southeast asia like there's not a player issue you know there's tons of players so Definitely. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've, I've, I've always heard this, and it always bothers me because I queue on Europe all the time when people are like, European players will come to NA and be like, oh, NA players are so dog. And then, I'll, you know, NA players will go to EU and be like, Europe, European players are so bad. Don't let anybody tell you that they aren't. Everybody's just bad. Like, NA players farm way too much. European players fight way too much. They, they don't hit creeps. They just are constantly looking to fight and be aggressive. Um, you know, in a structured way, SEA people just fight nonstop, no ma- literally no matter what, even with like anti mage. <laughs> um, Europeans like don't counter pick anywhere near as much. They just pick. Oh, I want to wisp mid. I'm gonna pick wisp mid, no matter what. Okay, they have timber puck. Uh, okay, counters doesn't matter. I'm picking wisp mid. They just there's problems. There's problems in every bracket, really. Problems or flavors, flavors of different Dota. Exactly, exactly. So if you put all the regions together, you have I don't know some fucking cookies and cream bullshit. <laughs> Rainbow, Man, I got this rainbow co- sherbet, <laughs> something like that. I got this cookie dough ice cream, and it's it's called loads of cookie dough. And I open it up, and there's there's not that much cookie dough in it. And I realized like what they did there was they they managed to trick me into buying one single. Their business model is getting people to buy one single cookie dough ice cream <laughs> because you buy one, you expect a lot of it, and then there isn't, and then you realize oh they just named it loads of. That's the brand name, loads of, and then it's the cookie dough version of the loads of ice cream. It's like, fuck you, man. What is wrong with you? Why would you do that? I'm never buying this again. I got one, and I'm never going to buy it again. If you just put lots in there, I buy it every time. I get fat. It's easy to not be fat in today's day and age because companies are just scamming you. Anyway, it's true. So. They, they really, like, I've, I've noticed that, like, chip bags, for example, have gotten less and less full. Like, Dude, you, you hold it up like that, and it goes to here, and it's like this much chips right at the bottom. Like, yeah. Garbage. Ridiculous. Garbage. It's so, it's so ridiculous. What's the point of these big, p- big puffy bags if they're not filled up with chips? And that's why they're not see-through. Because if they were see-through, you'd look and be like, "What the fuck? This is half full. There's something wrong with this one." Yeah. You give it to their customer service department. Yeah, that's why the only that's true. The only bags that have a window into how many chips are there are the Tostitos bags, like the the, the corn. Filled. Yeah, the they're corn chip bag, and they're filled all the way up, hundred yes. percent. Maybe they're like less expensive to make, so. Uh, these bastards are, are <laughs> just scamming us, man. How, like, and these are the these are the corporations. These are the corporations that are gonna that are that aren't gonna lower prices with the coronavirus. They're gonna be fighting against this. You know, they're gonna be trying to gouge people with. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's let's move on. Uga Chaka says, "Is the meta worth following below legend?" No. Uh, Dan one says, "When should you build guardian greaves? Is it a must-have item on Underlord?" I don't think so. No, it's a it's a good item. I think that it's every good. team would benefit from having one most games, but it's not an every game item on probably any hero. It's very game yeah. dependent. Yeah, I I like mech when I have some like PL or Meepo or some hero that I get benefit from like healing a ton of things at once. Um, pipe against magic damage, mech against just any damage. Uh, Crimson Guard is was kind of a shitty item for a while. Might be good now. Crimson was kind of like the physical the thing with Crimson versus versus Mech is like they kind of do the same thing. Like they yep. both are are just against like physical damage. Pipe is just so good for magic damage, so you get that all the time against magic damage. But uh, Crimson was bad, so everybody was going Mech. But now Crimson is good, so maybe Crimson is the new Mech, and you don't go ever go Mech. Uh, Greaves is also good against silences and like things you need to purge. So that that's when you when you would go Greaves, and if you just need mana because there's mana burn or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like constant spam on your team, like some invoker, 
uh, Quas Wex, some some sort of thing like that. Okay. Uh, Fuzzy says, as an off laner that is good at laning and fighting, but has poor push and wave clear options. We talked about this. Say Slardar as the example that Fuzzy gives. What plays a role in the decision whether to keep laning and start moving around the map? It seems to me that a lot of factors go into this decision, and I'm not sure what are the most important ones. Especially if your other two lanes are struggling, it feels like a tough call. You can stay there and risk your other two lanes, keep feeding, and possibly tilt. Uh, or you can leave and there's a solid chance you'll fall behind because your hero can't come back with farming and pushing. I need to prune this decision tree because it's possibly a thousand MMR problem and I don't have much of a, uh, a clue. Yeah, that is definitely a possible thousand MMR problem. Definitely. Um, so I would say, I would say like that there, there is a lot that goes into the, that decision. And I always tell people this when I'm doing coaching now. And it's the fact that a lot of like 7k players will tell you that there's some sort of like flow chart or strategy that they, that they follow or they'll speak with such authority that you think that there's a flow chart or a strategy that they follow but the game is played too fast at a top level now because everybody's quite good uh so there is no strat it's just it is just all instinct because you can't be fast enough to be 7 to 8k mmr these days without without doing that um so with that being said what I'm about to say is kind of my instinct behind it but for me if I'm like a Slardar, it depends on a few things. If the other lanes actually have heroes that I can kill, I'll go there. Uh, if my lane is a is a lane that I don't want to be in anyway, like let's say I'm Slardar versus like a Razor or a Monkey King, I don't even need to see what the other lanes are. I'm not going to be there. Like as soon as I get six, I'm gone because it's better for me to roam unsuccessfully than to get cucked in the in the lane. And uh, so I would say, if the win condition of the enemy team, if a big win condition of the enemy team, say like an anti-mage, is in the lane, and you're destroying them, and your other lanes are not gankable, then you stay. But other than that, I would say you usually want to get the tower first before you, before, before you leave, ideally, if you're having a good lane. If you're having a bad lane, you just leave regardless. You always leave your lane if you're having a bad lane. You never... St I, I, I don't understand... I don't understand how a lot of people can just sit there and get fucked up for 10 minutes straight. You you just yeah. you just don't do it. You just don't put up with it. In Dota, if you're losing a lane, you just change. You just have three people come to your lane or you go to their lane. You just don't you just don't lane it. You don't have to subject yourself to that shit, but people feel like they do for for whatever reason. I this is my lane. It's my job to win this lane even if we're losing the lane. It's my job to somehow come back and win this lane even though I'm two levels behind the other hero. No. You leave. It's, you're not having fun. Go have fun. Like it's not fun to get owned in the lane. So no, if you're not having fun, not. go somewhere else and make something happen. You're just it just it just ruins the game. Like yeah. you're just letting a counter counter you. There's there's so much stuff to do on the map. To think that you're bound by some arbitrary lane, it's such a very it's such a human way of looking at it. We ha we all love patterns. We all love structure, and this like laning pattern that exists. Because it just happens that people figured that out in Dota. Like, there was jungling for a while. Um, you know, you used to be able to level one Roche. There was a lot of crazy shit that could ha that could happen. Uh, people try lane. People cut waves now. Like, there's other kind of roles that ha that that exist um, that that didn't that that don't exist anymore. That did exist, and there are roles that uh, do exist that never existed before. So just go do something else. There's always plenty of shit you can do. Yep. Uh, okay, so next question. Fuzzy says, somewhat related, how to go from decent awareness to great awareness? I mean, stuff like spotting a hero that emerges from fog to gank you and you have a half a second uh, or less to react before you get stunned. Is the big trip trick having the macro awareness stuff? Yes, I think so. Uh, and building a strong mental habit of guessing where heroes are at each half minute or so. Yeah, I, I, I would say I would say um, it's it's all macro. It's all macro awareness. Here's my it's advice. Play one hero for 100 straight games. And by the end of that, you will be so comfortable on that hero that you will never need to think about what you're doing on the hero unless you're like in the middle of a team fight or something like that. And that will allow you to not have to worry and spend mental capacity on last hitting or Microsoft. where you should go or what item you're buying next. I notice this so much when... I'm playing a hero that I don't like automatically know the item tree that I want to go into. 
in a game or like if i'm playing a game that's hard and like maybe a hero on my team is not doing their job or i got up countered in lane by how they switch their lanes up or something like that and so suddenly my idea of how the game was supposed to go has been completely flipped on its head and i have to go for other items and i have to like figure out what the correct build path is through this weird build that i've never done before um anytime that happens i just know that my map awareness is terrible like i can just feel it just just flip a coin and you're be- you got better odds of winning the game dude yep. <laughs> <laughs> like really if you're playing something you don't you don't understand you can't you're just making random decisions yep and maybe it'll work i don't know but yeah in order to make those like good decisions and think about those things you have to you have to know your hero i totally agree uh that's definitely step one and i would say step zero is understanding and accepting the fact that sumail doesn't do this shit because his reaction time is better than yours you could you know you could find plenty of i mean this is really obvious but you could find the person with like the best reaction time in the world throw them in a dota match and tell them to react to something and then throw sumail into a dota match and tell them to react and sumail knows all the mechanics and everything by heart so of course he's going to react better he's a professional player right it's 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 not but for some reason and we we have this idea of like it's strictly reaction time it's strictly when i say things are instinct because i know i just said that um when i say things are instinct i mean more so that there was at some point a structure and a formula and a flow chart behind all of these ideas that pros have but it becomes instinct so it's like yes he is reacting to these things and yes he has the instinct for where heroes are on the map he feels it it's a feeling humans are really good at that we have no fucking idea why but you get you do something enough you just feel where things are people can close their eyes and play piano could i close my eyes and play piano no i'd have to google what the individual fu- i don't even know what the black keys do on a piano you know it's it's but somebody closes their eyes they feel the music we're really good at that um but that doesn't mean at some point you didn't have to learn it so you have to learn you have to learn the macro stuff and then all of the micro stuff kind of uh kind of follows from that or what looks to be micro i should say yeah, I want to answer a question from chat real quick because there's two people asking the same thing essentially, which is, what do you do if your teammates pick an unorthodox hero and then contest your farm and lane? If you're a core and they pick a weird, weird support hero and, and try to take your farm, oh god! Here's what you do: you just allow them to play to play core, like you you're recognizing that they're doing something that you don't really like. We just talked about it. If your lane sucks. Do something else. If you have to go jungle, go jungle. If you have to go gank, go gank. If you have to not build a battle fury and you have to build fighting items instead, do that. It's not the end of the world if your teammates are playing in some weird way that you don't like. Dota is about adapting to the situation at hand, and sometimes the situation is not something that you're comfortable with. But if you can be comfortable with it, you're gonna win. I uh, I remember there was. Uh, so two things. So I, I played with I played with BSJ on a team for a while, and I remember we went over a replay of like Ramses or somebody. They were doing this like lane swapping bullshit. You know how you like one team will pick Batrider, the other will pick Slark, and then you see the cores running between lanes, like trying to get the right matchup. Mm. Um, Ramses or whoever it was just stayed in a lane and supported it. They literally went. And, and played support, even though they were like an off laner. I don't think it was Ramses, but you get you get what I'm saying. Yeah. I remember watching that with BSJ, and he was like, "This is like he was fucking orgasming. He was so stoked about how super high skill it was." And then I remember like a year after that, um, I I I did it in a game, and uh, I did it in a game when I was playing with him, where they were just constantly lane swapping. And I was like, "Fuck it, I'm just I'm just supporting you. I'm I'm a support now." And then he was like, he was so stoked. He was so stoked with it. He was like, "Oh my god, Jenkins, you've gotten so much better at Dota." Like something, something like that. And you know, in BS, obviously, that's a fucking complete insult. Like depending on the way you look at it, uh, I didn't mind. But in BSJ terms, like that's you know, he he was he was basically ejaculating uh, when when he saw that that happen. And uh, I think I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize is um, higher skill at the top level than it looks even though it's such a simple thing just because to break that structure that we're that we're so used to is hard it's way harder to learn something and then unlearn than it is to learn in the first place when you have no idea yeah that's what we were just talking about too like right if you're if you're getting into a lane that's super hard and you're having a hard time with it 
most people will just stick in that lane and just get owned, right? Because it's harder to initially, it's it's initially harder to like break out of that mold and adapt and like, you know, go gank at level three as a carry Sven when you're playing against like Razor plus something that's just making your lane unplayable. We but, watched Arteezy do that. We watched Arteezy run yeah. mid as a free farm Sven and gank a Zeus yep. at like five minutes. It's it's just a good play. It doesn't matter that he's a carry. It's just a good play. And I think that's a big difference between a lot of the tier one pros and just everybody else is a lot of the tier one players just happen to think about the game in a, in a, at a really like simple level almost. Like they really simplify it. They don't get bound by all of like the constraints of the game. And it goes back to being actually excited to like innovate and make the best plays and be the best. Like that's that's a, a reason for it. And I know because like Nusham, for instance, is one of these players like major qualifying player fucking good at every single game that he plays and he just gets stoked theory crafting things and he came in back into dota when they added items he was doing things with the items i hadn't seen people do when they've been playing for two weeks and i think that's a big difference is that these players are are not as bound by the the ideas they like figure the ideas out themselves which is another reason why you should play the heroes that you enjoy right and and and, and focus on having fun with the game because Otherwise, you're never going to do the really, truly great shit in the game. It's it's not possible. Yep, agreed. Uh, what's up, Waga? We should we should have Waga Mama on our uh, on this podcast sometime. If you want to come on, he's in chat right now answering some questions too. Is that actual? Is that actual Waga? Is that your channel? Yeah, it is. Go to channel. Let me check that out. Oh, there he is. Those are good thumbnails. <laughs> Give your uh, thumbnail guy a pat, pat on, on the back. back. Or girl. Yeah. <laughs> or girl. Could be could be um could be either. Um okay. Let's uh let's give it a gander. Let's see what's next. Vince Scepter says the Jenks told me to watch the latest Owie two thousand video during last replay review. Yes, I did. Everybody should watch that. It's brilliant. Yep. Uh he talked a lot about protecting your own backline as a carry instead of going on their backline and causing yours to die. From some game leap videos, I learned that targeting the enemy backline when they're out of position was important. Do you guys think that one approach is generally better than the other? And also, could you explain what factors would make you choose one over the other? I mean, that's a hard that's a hard it's, question. It's all just situational stuff, right? Like if if the backline is a save, the backline is their main damage dealer, then you got to target that. If it's a less important hero, then no. If you have the ability to get to the backline without instantly dying, like. It's it's so game dependent, right? I think I think I have an answer. Hypothetically, I think I have an answer. I'm just I'm just you know crunching some numbers in my head, and I'm thinking I'm thinking like if if you are in the position where all you need to do is five man and you're gonna win the game, which usually if you are at an advantageous timing, that's the case. Mm -hmm. You just play structured Dota and keep that momentum going and win the game. In that situation, you protect your backline because all you yeah. need to do is not lose that fight and you're going to win. You don't need to win the fight. You just need to not lose the fight. But if you are in a, a disadvantageous position, if you need to win at an early timing or if they're beating you in the game and they have a strong timing, then you go for their backline because you need to do the more risky, aggressive shit to, to, get, a, to get a lead. You know, it's like... If yeah. you have a, if you, if you have a billion dollars and you or a million dollars and you want to live for the rest of your life, are you going to put it in cryptocurrency and potentially lose it all, or are you going to put it in some sort of safe investment? Which maybe not a great example because those don't exist right now. But let's say there's no coronavirus. Do you want to put it in a, a safe investment and and make enough money per year to live for the rest of your life? Well, of course that solves your problem entirely. Why put it in crypto when all you're trying to do is is you know in Dota it's binary, you win or you lose. So it's it's the same thing, and that's why protecting your backline it's the it's the safer approach. So it just depends. What risk factor do you want to take? Are you willing to risk it? If you're willing to risk it, it should just be because you can't win the game if you don't risk it. And that's when you go for their backlines. Yeah, I agree. I also think that it has something to do with um, like your mobility as well. Um, and then I I do think that I fully agree with the sentiment that like if you guys win every single fight as five then you need to just play as a ball like you can let the storm spirit zip your back line if you're right next to him and you can just instantly kill him as a result right i've definitely won plenty of games where i'm the carry and i know that the only way we lose the fight is if our supports get dove 
and they've been getting dove, and then you just like sit back, or you you don't go super ham, and you just wait for the same play that's worked four times for the enemy team to be made again, and then you just instantly counter it. So, um, I I totally agree with that. Good question. Really good question, though. That's um, th- these are getting like. These are getting like more and more complicated every week. Actually, it's hard. To, it's hard to answer these ones. Yeah, it's not. A, it's not as easy. What's What's my build on Razor? It's not. It's not like that. This is right. like very, very <laughs> hypothetical, uh, very high level questions. High level, low level, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, smart questions, though. Uh, okay, Putsy McCoy says, "Would you guys say that it's ever worth it to get hooked by Pudge in contesting the zero minute?" Bounty rune, other than if you're playing Faceless Void, of course. Uh, if you're Ursa, go for it. Run I don't him know. down. I feel like, <laughs> I, I feel like uh, Pudge, what's a level one Pudge going to do to you? Exactly. <laughs> do I don't know. I would I would say, yeah, 100, 150 HP for, I mean, let's see. How much How much does a single tango give you? About That's, that, I, right? I feel like it's about a, about a single tango for 200 gold benefits, so... Yeah. Um, it depends on how many heroes are there, I, I guess, is my answer. Let's see, a single tango is 7 health regen for 16 seconds, so... Not quite 150, but, you know, decent yeah. amount. It's, it's a pretty good trade, I would say. Especially Let's if you can just I kill the today. pudge, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a good trade. That's a solid trade. So yeah, I would say probably it is worth it. Bounties are just so important, so important. Yeah, pl- Pudge is pathetic. I don't know what I don't know what Pudge did wrong to deserve <laughs> this. Like, I swear to God, Ice Frog has like night terrors of just Pudge like butchering him, and he wakes up just like screaming and pissed himself, and he's like, "I'm gonna nerf that hero." I don't know what else it could be. I mean, they've been pushing away from Pudge being the mascot of Dota for a while, right? It was juggernaut it's been juggernaut for a long time then they came out with like a new dota advertisement screen for twitch and it was still juggernaut and then like storm and wind ranger and tiny no pudge fuck pudge what's wrong with these people man come on valve i shouldn't have said when i had the valve interview i shouldn't have said that i was a pudge main i think that's probably why they declined (laughs) me had nothing to do with the fact that like they all have 10 years of programming experience it was literally just the fact that i'm a that I'm a Pudge main. They're probably like, oh, he's just another one of those 40 percenters that pick this hero like every oh, yeah. game. <laughs> we don't we, want any 40 percenters at we Valve. We look for unique people here at Valve. This guy's just another Pudge picker. <laughs> oh, that's sad. Kremlin says, I've discovered the Soul Ring, and I've been using it in place of Arcane Boots for strength heroes with early game mana problems or supports who want to use a lot of spells in the early game but could also benefit from additional health regen and magic resistance. But then I saw one of your videos on how to spot an account buyer. All right, Donnie, you're going to need to answer this one. And one of the <laughs> points that was raised in the in-game chat was the suspected account buyer had bought a soul ring. So who should and shouldn't buy a soul ring and why? Why is it okay to buy on techies but not an alchemist? Donnie, you want to answer this one? Uh, I personally just don't really like soul ring right now. I feel like it's kind of one of those items that it doesn't build anything. It doesn't really go anywhere. Like... You you get it, and then, sure, you can cast some spells for free. You have kind of infinite mana. Or you could just have, like, 200, 300 gold worth of clarities, which cost less than a soul ring, and then you've accomplished your goal anyway. Clarities are broken now, dude. Have you seen them? They're yeah. nuts. Yeah, they're super good. I just don't really feel like there's any reason not to just go clarities when you would consider going a soul ring. And if you think that you need more mana, then you just go arcane boots. And and mo- I would I would actually say like Sol Ring is just Sol Ring should be dead with how with how Clarities function now. I agree. I feel like a lot a lot of like Clarities, if they aren't considered overpowered tomorrow, I guarantee you in two weeks everybody will be saying nerf Clarity. One hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, from what I've seen in games, Clarities are fucking insane. I I have that I had that gut feeling. Yeah, they're they're super good. I mean, like, why do you want the Sol Ring? Do you do you need it to like use a burst? like burst mana for one ability in a team fight, why not just have like a, a wand that you're not using off of cooldown anytime it gets charges? Just like hold the wand for a little bit. Accomplishes the same thing and is just better in general. Yeah, wands are pretty nice. Pretty solid item. Uh, Zebus says, I'm a legend player and I usually do well in my games. Recently queued with some friends in 5 to 6k and felt completely overrun. 
what would you say the main differences between players in Legend, Ancient, and Divine Bracket? Okay, I want to say one thing here just because I feel like everybody and their mother thinks that they could perform in a higher bracket. And it is always such a kick in the balls when you get in that bracket and you get shit stomped. Mm -hmm. Like you don't realize how much better people are until you're actually there. And, and I say and this also, as... and also the habits that have been working thus far that you've ingrained through the bracket that you're in, you have to break them. You you can't go up significantly in MMR and not reform your habits because your habits do not work once you move up like 500 to a thousand MMR. Yeah, it's, it is crazy how fast, even the difference between playing in like rank 300 to 500 immortal games and uh, playing in these uh, like top t 10 games where it's like, you know, CC and C, Sumail, like all these people in the game. It is so fast paced. It's insane. It's like you don't even have time to hit a single fucking creep camp because everybody's constantly running across the map, fighting each other, smoking, roaching, taking this objective, team fighting, respawning, instantly smoking, fighting. It's just like, and, and if you, if you die like once when you're not supposed to, you just fall behind and you get more and more. I mean, I, I could, I gotta tell you, man, some of those games I've gone like one in 17 because I, I like died twice when I shouldn't have. And then they just keep punishing me and punishing and punishing and punishing because mm -hmm. there's so, so little mistakes that happen in that game. That like people will just punish you if you make if you make too many, and they'll keep punishing you because they realize that they can. It's uh, it's it's really it's really ridiculous. I feel like there's a lot of people out there that think that they could, that they could play in like higher rated games, but then they they can't. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's you just don't know what you don't know. It's it's really crazy. Um, okay, so anyway, to answer the question, I haven't played in Legend, uh, probably for a long time, but I have played in Ancient. I have played in Divine. Uh, I played in Divine on my main if I queue at 6 a.m. And I play in Ancient uh, if I queue with my brother-in-laws. So um, I would say in, in Ancient, it's people are like just at the point where they're not bots. <laughs> it's not, it's yeah. like not playing against easy bots. So Ancient is is like people are good at some heroes, but mostly shit at everything. Their, their macro understanding of the game is almost non-existent, but their mechanics are reasonably good. Yeah, exactly. Like, they are just running around brawling, and their mechanics are good. Yep. Divine, you have people who have their heroes where their macro understanding is good. They know, okay, if I play Slark, I do this every game. Yep. But they follow the same thing every game. Yep. Um, and I would say in Divine, the biggest problem is showing up to every single team fight always. And letting your teammates make shitty decisions for you. Yep. That's that's a big that's a big thing in divine is people get people get pulled around. People don't really have their own ideas. Yep. They just they just kind of if a fight starts, they, they well, people have their own ideas. So almost they don't trust them. They don't they're not like rigid with them, you know. Though like if a fight starts, they can have this idea of, oh, that's not good to do, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Right. That's what divine players do. Divine players just like they a lot of them know what the proper thing is, but they just don't do it. Because, I don't know, instinct, because they don't have enough confidence, whatever reason. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, don't know, I don't know with Legend. It's been, it's been forever. Yeah, I haven't played in Legend Bracket in a long time either. I Good feel, problem to have, I suppose. I, I feel like from looking at some of the Legend replays that we have, it's, it's kind of like the same sort of flavor as, as Ancient, where like, Sometimes you will have some mechanical people who are pretty good at their heroes. Um, but just in general, everything in, in Legend is, like, very slow. It's like, Tier 1 towers die, and then both teams retreat to the other side of the map. And then they just wait until, like, several items have been farmed. And then they, like, oh, yeah. kind of just, like, meet up in the middle. They're like, alright, we'll see you guys uh, in, like, six Legend months. Bracket. Five man mid. That is probably the most iconic thing in yep. Legend and Below is the old five man mid. Because they know that, that they're supposed to take that tower, but they have no idea about how to actually accomplish it. I would say I would say probably that's a big difference between uh Legend and Ancient is in Ancient, maybe that's Divine and Ancient. In Divine, I would say that's pretty uncommon to yep. see like a just a five man mid. I would say that's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? You're better than this level territory. Yeah. Whereas in Ancient, it's like okay 
you, you guys, you, you're like pressing good mechanics when you're mid, but you're still five minute mid. Yep. It's hard to say what the differences are just because like, it's, uh, it's just like a distribution sort of thing. Like we, we can talk about what the most common thing is in that distribution, but depending on the player, they might actually be really good at not doing the things that we just mentioned, but they're legend for some other reason. That's perfectly viable. Yeah, I, I just kind of think that like the lower and lower you get, the more leadership is required to win those games from one person. Like, I just think that the there's just a, a huge lacking of leadership below like high ancient games. And if if you are below high ancient, you need to just ask your team to do stuff with you. Like, and you will gain a thousand MOR. Just be like, hey Can guys, you do a herald yeah. stream. That's a question. <laughs> Can I ask you a question, chat? So I was very close. I was very close to making a video called Three Things That Herald Players Do That Immortals Don't, that, that They Should, something along those lines. And for the life of me, I couldn't find anything. I, I thought I was going to be able to find something. I thought I was, I was like, this is going to be a funny video because I'm going to be able to find something. For God's sakes, it is like, it's like watching dogs and cats just spam their fingers or their little nubs on a keyboard and try to play there's nothing absolutely nothing going on in the, in that in that bracket people are going afk and shit just <laughs> they'll just be standing in the mid lane go afk it's cr it's ridiculous they like it's crazy. tab out there's just like people are just they like hit their spells just off of cooldown run out of mana and then just have no spells to hit so they just kind of stand there and like right click creep away right. famously <laughs> so my question my question for you chat is would you find it entertaining if Donnie and I were to do a serious replay review of a Herald game? Like we, we basically treat it like it's a pro match and just do a replay review of it. Of just some fuck, total Herald chaos. Because I don't know if that's mean or not. I feel like that's, bo that's bordering on mean, but it could be really fun and really funny. Yeah. But it's, it seems kind of mean. We could we could also do like three minutes of laning stage in Herald versus three minutes of laning stage in Ancient versus three minutes of laning stage in Immortal. That might be kind of interesting. But then people are gonna blame us for stealing Polka's videos, even though we <laughs> came up with that. We idea. were the first to do that at the request of Dayman, who is one of our patrons. I think he I think he he's such a good guy that he was doing the like uh, eighty dollar patron when we removed it he was yeah. just kept doing it yeah he's such he's just what, a, what a, we got some nice patrons man we got some really great people i've been coaching people and there's some dude there's some good guys out there let me just say that i'm not trying to dox uh dox anybody but yeah I people agree. do cool, people do real cool shit they're cool people uh anyway speaking of patrons poopy pants boy one of our great patrons says what heroes can take advantage of the current state of crystallis the best uh, I personally switched out Desolator for uh, on TA for it. I still get Blightstone. Uh, okay, so I guess this question is probably bef before the patch. Wait, you switched out Desolator for what? Crystalis. Oh. I have seen people like occasionally do that, but let's see. How did they? How did they change Crystalis? I'm pretty sure they it got pretty heavily nerfed. The uh, the, the crit this. chance went up by ten percent, and the damage went down. And the recipe went up, I think. The damage went down a lot, right? Yeah. Um, let me see here. Let me go ahead and check this out. Where is it? Oh, it shows the neutral items first. Okay, recipe cost to 700 from 500. The damage reduce, was reduced from 45 to 34, and the crit chance has been increased. I don't okay. hate it in theory. I don't hate it in theory just because that hero can build into Bloodthorn early sometimes like if you're against some storm or some hero like it's owned by orchid and it can be pretty good i would say that ta is one of those heroes that's really really uh linear very linear at the moment but probably doesn't have to be you know like there are these heroes that be, they they get built in a way that's like successful enough to where it just becomes the only thing that people do but there are other ways to play the hero that's true that's true i'm sure we'll discover something that always happens. Like it, it's always these heroes that people. Oh yeah, Bloodthorn doesn't have the credit in it anymore, so never mind. <laughs> uh, it does. It does. Uh... Oh wait, no, you're right. It, it, that's right. So Crystal's just Daedalus. Yeah. I mean, still, 
still you uh you do yeah i guess in that you, case probably not to, because if you just want list. burst you might as well just go for for the somebody said don't, yeah, so i don't know will uh will ring of tarask be a standard offlane item i honestly totally forgot that item even existed yeah that's the that that's one of those items you literally only buy it when you're trying to get a heart and you just you're like wait what does this take again oh it takes a ring of tarask okay I'll buy i mean that let's as well. see <laughs> Okay, so 600 gold, 150 health, and 4.5 HP regen. It's probably pretty good at this point. Am I crazy thinking maybe you can just start with that item? Maybe. 150 extra health in the early game? That's that's what? like, Dude. That's five branches. That's five branches? Actually, that might be pretty good. Especially on, see. on a hero that has very high HP regen already, like, like a Nyx or Night, Night Stalker, Night Stalker. Axe. <laughs> Oh my god. What about like axe or something like that? I gotta try that. Let's see, what is this shitty item build into? <laughs> it's so it's a holy locket and it's oh, heart. Christ. <laughs> so basically heart. It builds into heart. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. I'm trying to ask first. I'm a hundred percent trying that. Four point five HP regen? That's that really good. sounds that sounds crazy to start with. Yeah, especially on a hero that has high already. Offlane Ricky. There Dude, it we're is. we just discovered something here together today. New all of new us. New meta. And with the question and and yeah, that's crazy. I'm trying. I'm, I'm I'm literally queuing after this, and I'm gonna do Trask first. And if it works, I'm making a video on it. <laughs> Go to Alchemy. I'm making the next video that's gonna be on this channel is gonna be me reviewing one of my lanes. With the Ring of Tarrasque. The best just... starting items in Dota. Like, uh, remember how the the worst starting items in Dota is like one of our most viewed videos ever? Make the best starting items in Dota. And it's literally no, the just... the best starting item in Dota Period. ever. Dash coronavirus. Please click my video. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to put that in there. Exactly. Uh, okay. Gork will be mad. Why will Gork be mad? Because he thinks, does he think it's bad or does he do that? Uh, do I stream? I sometimes stream. I might stream tonight. I was thinking about it. Fuzzy says, more questions. Honestly, these can be done next week if it's too much. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, we'll do it next week. Fuck off, Fuzzy. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Fuzzy says, was my boy Slaughter indirectly nerfed or buffed in 7.25? Uh, I mean, like the regen on a lot of offlane items was buffed. Like Medallion buffed, Hood buffed, Helm of Iron Will, Ring of Trask, um, Necronomicon. Dude, I'm not going to lie. If you buy Ring of Tarrasque on Ricky, you have 9 HP regen at level 1. That's more than a Tango running at all times. Yeah. yeah. Didn't YouTube say they would demonetize videos if coronavirus is mentioned? GG. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, I, th I think a lot of people are getting... It's People know that. It's just the views are worth... R you know, it's, it's like... What, what was that? Ripperonis. Oh, you're just saying referonies. Okay, I see. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to contribute to the conversation a little bit. Yeah, that was really great. My I appreciate bad. it. <laughs> big, big rip from pepperonis. Um, yeah, people, YouTube, YouTube ad revenue is like garbage anyway. People don't care about ad revenue. Yeah, it's unfortunately like people get so much more money from the other stuff. Not us, but other people do. A uh, player who wants to become better should not hide their match data. A player who wants to gain as much MMR. With the skill they should have, should hide their match data. Agree slash disagree. <sighs> Let me think about that one. That's a good question. So you're not hiding your match data. No, I would say, okay, if you hide your match data and you get better games, or you 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 get better, your MMR increases, you're gonna get better games because your MMR is higher. And I think that's gonna teach you faster than shitty players counterpicking you. I think I think you're going to get way better by queuing into higher rated games organically than by like basically getting yourself counterpicked because your match data is unhidden. I, I feel like you should just... It should be mandatory to either hide or unhide it. It should be one way or the other. Everybody should have it hidden or everybody shouldn't have it hidden. I think that's how it should be. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's probably like that because Valve, they want people to feel like they have the option to... They would prefer if it was just available, <laughs> right? But they want people... 
they want to respect privacy, quote unquote. So, yeah, I can un- I can understand it, but but yeah, I agree. Uh, I I feel yeah. like you're probably better off not getting counterpicked all the time because people are using Dota Plus on you or something like that. Everybody's using Dota Plus now, dude. We should have gotten on that train and put it on a video because we just get all these downloads from people that were thinking of downloading it anyway. Yep. We would have made boatloads of money. Like probably 50 bucks. Dude, do you know how many of these Diet Cokes I could buy with 50 bucks? Probably like 50. <laughs> that's that's a lot of Diet Coke, man. That's like three days worth right Indeed. there. Indeed. Okay. Uh, Deegan says, I've been playing Dota since 2016, and I've never made it above 1K MMR. I wa- what are you laughing about? Me? Nothing. Yeah. Were you, oh, you didn't. You're not laughing at 1K MMR. You think no. curls are funny, buddy? No. I watch a lot of your educational content and try following it, but I'm stuck. Not because of my teammates, but myself. I keep trying to play carry to win. I'm not sure if that's my best role, but it is my most played. I also feel like my team. I hold my team back when trying to play support by feeding, getting caught, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I just feel like I can't find the role uh, I like, and I don't mind farming, but I feel like I join fights too early and losing my team the game eventually. Uh, usually if somebody's stuck at like below 1k MMR from my experience, it's not playing the proper role or hero. It's never, it's rarely anything other than that. So is it worth it to buy Dota plus? No, we're talking Dota dot plus. It's some, some random other app. I don't know why it's named the same thing anyway. Yeah. So I would say find a hero that you really enjoy and find a strategy on it that's working and keep doing it over and over and over and over until you just master that hero. Yes. That's all, that's all I can say. Uh, you shouldn't be 1K within a month if you're doing if you're doing that. I, I guarantee you. And if you're still 1K, it's because you're not doing that. Yeah. I, I would honestly say that if you are 1K, if you're 1.5K and lower, all you have to do is just play the same hero for like a month straight and you will go to 2K at least. And it's boring, but then you can play whatever hero you want at 2K. And you'll usually stick within that bracket because you've just gotten better yep. by playing that one hero. You understand the game better. You, once again, going back to you don't have to focus on the micro bullshit. You can focus on the macro. You can learn the macro when you actually know a hero and a role that you're playing in every single game. That's also why I recommend to people, like, if you play Batrider offlane, for example, and you're forced to play five in a pub, don't try to play Crystal Maiden. Play Batrider five. Yep. Play something you already know. The lane is different, sure, but the rest of the game is the same. So yeah, you're gonna have to learn the laning phase, but it's way easier than learning. Um, you know, that's like, like there's a lot of clock. That's what like IX Mike did. Yeah, you know, he was an yeah. offlaner forever, and then he just he became played... a five that played bat all the time. Right, exactly. That's how he started. Um, I was gonna say it's like uh, in college. Um, I was extremely lazy uh, because you know I think a lot of computer science students are lazy as fuck. So. I would take a lot of classes that had overlap. I would take like a math course that was on, uh, you know, like computational theory. And then I would take a computer science course that was the same. And I would bang out one of my math credits and then I'd bang out one of my CS credits. And both of the classes were covering the exact same things. Like it diverged a little bit, but it's like 80% of the exact same stuff. And that was how, that was how I managed to make time to play tier two Dota in university was being extremely fucking lazy and choosing courses that had overlap and you need to do that with heroes as well that's that's how you learn multiple roles is playing the same hero in those roles yep uh parody says what do you think about 90 percent lifesteal on wraith king passive at level 25 and they also asked if our dota is broken no my dota is fine uh he linked a picture and my dota is not does not look like that uh that's unfortunate. It fucked up your computer. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> yeah, that's a crazy picture. But um, 90% lifesteal on Wraith King at 25. I don't know. I like the other talent still. I feel like some, you know. The other talent's the Wraith Fire Blast AoE, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, people are going to have Satanics and stuff anyway. And and Spear Vessels and Disables. And I, I really feel like it's not all that not all that impressive at 25 but i haven't seen it yet so that's just my gut feeling yeah i mean i would say maybe there might be some niche strategy where you go like midas into rapier or something like that <laughs> <laughs> just to get 25 quickly and then you have insane lifesteal with like with a rapier by the way did you see that at the at the summit where madara went uh treads ags divine 
and they on oh, Wraith King. On Wraith King. No, but that. Why eggs? Uh, just to make his entire team, like unkillable. That's interesting. That's a very interesting one, but yeah, that's that's weird. I would think like just radiance and eventually get a divine. That's a very weird one. I I have seen uh PAs go Deso and then they Roche and then they get a rapier and yeah, then they just fight That's with really it. good. That's really good. It's legit like impossible to deal with. It's just so fucking awful. And then you go Ags afterwards and just reset your cooldowns after one shotting well, people. <laughs> Joseph, my problem with Oh, he TP he TP base. Oh, I see. I oh, see. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. But still, I still kind of feel like. Can you target the Wraith Kings? I don't think so. I don't think you can target it. I don't, I'm pretty sure it's untargetable. I'll test it right now. Oh, my God. That is fucking smart. <laughs> can you ground target stuns on it? You, you pro I think you probably can. Uh, I'm going to try it right now. Oh, you can still target it. You can? So Thor. Oh, okay. That's what Thor says. Maybe Thor's oh, dicking well, us around. Whatever. I'll test it later. Okay. Let's finish the podcast. Sergeant, Sergeant Sarcasm says, I'm super bad at farming, but tend to lose support games due to lack of understanding of the late game. I tend to die a lot. Then I feel like I'm not contributing anything to the team at that point since I'm being one shot in fights. What's a good thing to do during those times? Um, Stop farming. Push, don't show up to fights. Uh, You're playing support, though. Right? He says he plays support. He doesn't like being one shot as a support. Uh, I'm super bad at farming, but tend to lose support games due to lack of understanding of the late game. I'm not sure if these things are related. I think he's I saying guess. he's bad at farming, so he doesn't want to play carry, but he loses late game. Oh, game I support, see. I maybe. see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I don't know. I would say if you're dying a lot in fights as, as a support, you're probably building the wrong items. Like Glimmer, Ghost Scepter. Force is kind of a garbage item now, unfortunately. Buy bracers. Yeah, that too. Like, there's a lot of low, really low cost items that should be keeping you alive. Yep. Because if you look at the stats on like a Scotty versus a bunch of bracers, like bracers are way more cost effective. So there's there's not much of an excuse as, as a as a support. But like you said, if you get really far behind and you haven't made up for it yet, as you die, you can be so fucked at a point. But like that's why after your first death, you have to identify. I'm gonna keep dying if I don't get tanky items. I need a bracer. I need, you know what I mean? Like you have to be. Yeah. You have to catch catch the kind of catch it as it's like falling. You know, it's 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 like at a certain point, whatever it is that's falling in my stupid hypothetical thing, it's gonna hit the ground and smash. But if you catch it, it's like okay, maybe it'll cut your hand a little bit or hurt your hand, but you're still gonna be able to pick it back up and put it on the table. It's like a vase or something. It might. This, this is why we need to end the stream. I'm just coming no up with idea these what you're talking about right now. Dumb but... analogies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out of here. This is I'm done. That's a shitty analogy, uh, but you, you get what I'm saying. Like you, if you can you can fall behind to the point where you can't actually even show up to fights. I've had that happen, and that just means you didn't catch you didn't catch it soon enough. Sure. You know. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Dragon Knight off lane with first item Ring of Tarask and Dragon. Yeah, Blood. that sounds like. That sounds like you'll be really tanky, and then they just pick a Batrider, and then your entire game is fucked. Four armor, and ten HP regen at level one. Oh, wow, you'll be able to sit, sit in the lane and do nothing. That'll be really good. <laughs> really good. Fifteen HP regen, and seven armor at level two, level three. Eight, right. eight armor. Twelve okay, armor, done. fourteen armor. Twenty-six okay, armor. Done. Theory crafting the shit out of this right now. Are we done? Yeah. Is that the last question? That's it. That's it. Thank God. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Alchemy Answers. Any final words, Jenkins? Yes. Buy Diet Pepsi. Hey, you heard it here first. Hey, sponsor us Diet Pepsi if you want to. We 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 hawk oh, yeah. a lot. Hockey hockey We're hockey out here. <laughs>